am honored to be opening my season with Nikki Fargus. Nikki won an NCAA title here as a player under the legendary Pat Summit, recently coached at LSU, and now president of the Las Vegas Station. So, Madam President, and your royalty around here, a lot of expectations on this year's Lady Vols team. Kelly Harper, though, feels like she has the nucleus returning to fulfill those expectations. Well, when you look at her key returners, you've got to talk about Burrell. Burrell is one of the most talented players in the game today. And then Keyes is holding it down in the paint, a shot blocker, alternate shots coming in there, and then Horston, a player that can pretty much do it all for the late balls. Well, this year's team is predicted to finish higher than they've ever been predicted to finish since Kelly Harper took over as the head coach. They were picked second in the SEC preseason media poll, so those are some high expectations, but this is a group that Kelly Harper loves putting out on the floor. She has been nothing but positive about this year's team, and Ray Burrell is basking in the adoration of these fans. It's been a long time, Nikki. Good to be back on Rocky Top. It is. It's good to be back here. The fans are unbelievable. You know they're going to stand until Tennessee scores. So hopefully Tennessee will get a score pretty early in this contest. So many traditions here at Tennessee. Here's Key going to work on the first possession. Darby's first shot is off the mark. Darby is starting, by the way, in place of Horston. Horston has a, a slight lower limb extremity and is expected to play Friday against UCF in Orlando. But Kelly Harper holding Horston out in this game. Well, you're going to still see her much involved in the game. She's going to be the biggest fan, the biggest cheerleader on the bench for her teammates. Key committed the foul on the other end. This is our first look at the Salukis, Southern Illinois, out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Kelly Harper coached against this school for years when she was at Missouri State. Baseline. Kato went baseline, broken up. And that shot off the mark by McAllister. This is a much bigger lineup on the floor than Southern Illinois has, Nikki. So if you're Southern Illinois, how do you right away try to straighten that out as Di misses her first shot? Well, as you can see, Harper's game plan was to go inside and establish that post presence. And they're doing a great job of keeping Tennessee off the boards. You know, Southern Illinois is not the biggest team, but they're going to be patient offensively. They're going to look for the open player and take the best shot for their team. Their leading scorer, number 12 in the maroon, Sylvie. Shot clock down to five. Kata forces through, blocked by Key. Lady Vols in transition. Walker will slow it up. A uh, nice steal by Love. <laughs> a little feistiness there on the ball. That's not a, a, a play that you typically are going to, to see from, from uh, Walker. But again, I, you got to give Southern Illinois a lot of credit right now. Two minutes, they're winning this battle right now because they're not giving the Lady Balls any transition baskets or anything oh, easy. Well, that actually was not a pass, but Cato is in the right place at the right time. Good stick back. And it is Southern Illinois scoring first. Kelly Harper in her third season. She's now one of only two coaches ever to take four different programs to the NCAA tournament and is rapidly becoming one of the elite coaches in the country. And you can see the style of play that Coach Harper is trying to instill here. And it's to be in that attack mode every single time. There's Burrell attacking the basket for her first bucket. She had a big week named as on the uh, watch list for three of the major Player of the Year awards in women's college basketball. Here's Sylvie and an offensive foul away from the ball. Let's go back to that Burrell drive. Yeah, Burrell is being aggressive off the pay, off the bounce, and this is something that she can do. She can create off the dribble. She can shoot the three. She's added layers to her game, and, and she's going to continue to be one of the best players, um, not only in the SEC, but in the country. Ray Hoops, she's working on her own brand as well. Which I love that. I love that these young ladies are doing more than just, hey, I'm just putting on a uniform. She's thinking about what is my life going to be like after basketball. Tennessee struggling to score here early. Sylvie, the leading scorer for the Saluki, short on that three. And Burrell will push it down again. Tennessee one of four to open the game. 
I will say something, you know, with Southern Illinois defensively getting back in transition, that's been key. They're, it's like I'm going to take the shot. If we don't get a good one, we're all sprinting back the other way. Another good defensive play as a Key was stripped. The toughness um, that Key brings to this team inside, you know, that's something that a lot of teams got to figure out. How do we score? So you're going to probably see a lot of perimeter shots by Southern Illinois. Well, Key is getting uh, into it with Brockmeyer. This was on the other end. Brockmeyer stripped the ball from her, and then Key just picked up her second foul, uh, defending Brockmeyer a little too aggressively on the other end. Well, that's something that when you got that first foul, I mean, it's a it's a coach's decision. Do I sit her? Do I trust her? And obviously, Coach Harper trusted her. And th in that situation, um, the foul, I'm going to go at her. I'm going to make sure that I'm putting pressure on, on their center who just picked up an early quick foul, and then now she's picked up her second, and they're telling when Coach Harper's going to bring her back. Don't you love it, Nikki, that it was Horston that went over and talked to her, not a coach? It's, it's Coach Horston <laughs> tonight. <laughs> A lot of good play action here by Southern Illinois. They were bringing the shooter through the double screen there, which then allowed them to get the three ball off. McAllister missed the three. Cindy Stein is the head coach at Southern Illinois in her ninth season. She's announced she will retire at the end of this season. Everyone wondering if her associate head coach, former Lady Vol Jody Adams-Birch, will get the job. It's the second foul on Kata. So Tennessee and Southern Illinois have two of their post players with two fouls. Southern Illinois switched up defense. They've gone to a zone now. Well, I wonder how long they'll stay with that. Burrell busted that zone. Burrell, she's, she's what I'm going to call, she hunts. She hunts for her <laughs> shots night in and night out. This kid can literally put points on the board at a high rate. Walker picks up the foul for Southern Illinois. That is the team's fourth, excuse me, third. Low scoring first quarter here. Tennessee played an exhibition a week ago. Actually, Kelly Harper played against her younger brother, Russ, at Georgia State. Excuse me, Georgia College. Green just picked up her first foul. In that game against Georgia College, um, even though it's an exhibition game, every player that played for the Lady Vols at least scored um, four points and had a rebound. Um, so, so a balanced attack that night against her brother, um, and that's what family it's about. You know, hey, I'm going to compete against you, but after the game, I'm going to give you a big hug. Yeah, I was wondering what Thanksgiving would be like this year for them. Here's Darby on the break. A uh, nice defensive play by number 21, Peyton McAllister, got her hand in that passing lane. Again, transition defense is so critical for Southern Illinois. And when Tennessee gets out, they're one of the best teams at executing in that transition game. But right now, the, uh, Southern Illinois is doing a great job of eliminating that. And there's the height advantage, Burrell taking advantage of it. And uh, Burrell's really been all of Tennessee's offense here early. Yes, and she's doing it multiple ways. She's scoring, taking the ball to the hoop. She's coming across the zone, shooting uh, pull-up jumpers. Just the versatility of her game offensively. It's hard to stop her. Burrell has all six Tennessee points. And then Burrell going for the steal, knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with Southern Illinois. Again, Burrell is someone is, uh, that is on everyone's watch list, and there's a reason, because she can score the basketball multiple ways, and she's doing it in the paint for the Lady Balls. Does it in the classroom as well on the SEC Academic Honor Roll. Several of these players uh, we'll talk about, I'm sure, throughout the night, just so accomplished academically. Sylvie looking for a shot, three on the shot clock. They gotta get it off in a hurry. Shot would have counted, but it did not go in. Oh, and then Darby, unfortunately, could not grab that basketball, lost it out of bounds. So Southern Illinois will have the ball when we come back, and the Salukis are hanging with the Lady Balls in the season opener. Well, hard to see her right now, but Jody Adams-Burks, the associate head coach for Southern Illinois, is in there conducting this huddle. And Nikki, she played for Pat Summit, was starting point guard for three SEC championship teams. This is her when she was 
with Pat as a player. They won the 1991 national championship when she played. But uh, what are your recollections and reminiscences of Jody Adams Birch? Jody Adams was very intense. I just remember coming to practice and she would be the first one in the gym, the last one to leave. She was a student of the game. She understood the game. And to be a point guard for Pat Summit, and Coach Harper can attest to this as well as, as Coach Birch, you have to be a, a, a floor general. You've got to lead while you're on the court. And Jody Birch is showing that she's that and, and more. As a coach, as a player, I'm just so excited that when you look at Pat Summit's legacy, Lady Balls are not only coaching, we're commentary, we're teachers, we're doing a lot of different things I think Coach Summit would be proud of. Yeah, I think Pat would be very proud of the, the teaching aspect you mentioned because Jody was telling us today that she has an intern. Like one of her players, Awakeda, is getting her master's in sports administration and She's Jody's intern in that process. So Jody is teaching her about working in an athletic department. And it's so important for these young ladies to get that um, experience while they're in school. Shot put up and immediately missed. So Tennessee very fortunate there. Miles into the game. One of the talented freshmen that Kelly Harper brought in this year. Miles from Frankfort, Kentucky. She was Kentucky's Miss Basketball last year. And boy, that is good defense by McCallis. You got to watch her. Yeah, she's deceptive there. She got in the passing lane. That that could have went the other way for a layup. Southern Illinois' defensive intensity right now to hold Tennessee to six points um, in this in the first half of the first quarter. Uh, they've got to feel good about that. Offensively, they're going to have to get themselves going, but defensively, they're oh. doing enough. Uh, a foul on Brockmeyer. And that is the first on Brockmeyer, but the uh, fourth on the team. Again, here's Keys. Uh, I'm sorry, Burrell coming through the lane and just got just got physically mugged right there by Brockmeyer. But again, it, it's got to be physical play. You have to be physical against a team like Tennessee. Remember, Tamari Key out with two fouls. Horston not playing today with a, a slight injury. Nice take by Brooklyn Miles. Dribble, dribble penetration down the paint in the middle of the floor eliminates any help side defense. And that, there you see Miles taking it to the hoop and scoring a layup. Easily no one able to touch her. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Southern Illinois has not scored since we were at the eight-minute mark. And as Tennessee starting to extend its lead, this is Caitlin Link, number five. The length of Tennessee really disrupts people. I don't think you realize it until you have to play against it. It's not easy getting a shot off, a little high ball screen action there, freed up a jumper. And again, you're going to have to move their bigs around. So Sylvie was able to get that jumper because the, the post player wasn't there lending enough help. She ended an 8-0 run by Tennessee. Uh, Sylvie averaged, about, or averaged 15 points a game last year. Darby with three. Off the mark, some action under the basket as Green grabbed the rebound, but a foul on Tennessee. Tennessee foul number one, Sarah Puckett. That foul is on first. Puckett. It is the fifth team foul. And that is team foul number five on Tennessee. Sarah Puckett checking into the game. That's one thing we will see, I think, a lot of tonight, Nikki, are, are subs. Kelly Harper wants to get the freshman as many minutes as she can in this non-conference portion of the schedule. Well, when you listen to... to, to Coach Harper, Kelly, she's talking about this experience that they need because if you're going to have them ready for SEC uh, play, and she said this, for January and February and March, I've got to get them playing here now in November and December. Everybody played in the exhibition. Gabby Walker just made a couple of free throws for Southern Illinois. With the substitution of Puckett, you know, got four players in there that can really uh, make this zone have to work. Pocket uh, number one in white uh, calling for the ball across the court from Burrell. Now she's got it. Uh, that was an ambitious pass across the lane. Nice catch by Brockmeyer. And a third turnover on Tennessee. Well, the game 
plan by Coach Stein and her staff has is, is been pretty impressive. Uh, they're running when they need to. Again, that high ball screen allows for, for their players to get those open looks. A good look there for Sylvie. She just couldn't connect it. And I loved Walker's reaction when she couldn't say that. She was mad. Yeah, she she was. fired up. She was. Again, that's, that's, that's the culture of a team that understands possessions, and every possession matters. Well, Southern Illinois uh, endured a six-and-a-half-hour bus ride yesterday, got here from Carbondale, Illinois, and spent part of today at the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. And then I had pictures taken with the Pat Summit statue outside today. They've been enjoying themselves. Pocket with the, the miss. I'll tell you, this... Uh Offensive rebounding is a strength of Tennessee's, and with keys out, they're not getting any second and third opportunities. No keys, no Horston. This was probably not a, a lineup that Coach Harper thought she'd have to face, be forced to face tonight, but a good experience for the Lady Balls. Shot clock again, down to four. Love with the runner, no good. And Love hustles out and gets her own miss. Those 50-50 balls can lead to additional possessions, and as you can see, Southern Illinois is going to take their time. Final two minutes of the opening quarter. Link for three. Got it! Caitlin Link from Madison, Wisconsin drains it. Ball movement, player movement, allowed for an open three here. It's the first three-pointer we've seen made in the entire game. Darby. Wow, offensive foul on Darby. Look, here goes the miss right here. Good hustle play. Ran back, ran, uh, the ball was ran down by Love. Good heads up here. Extra pass. And now they're draining the three by Link in the corner. Again, Southern Illinois is taking it, their time. They're not rushed. They're not feeling like they've got to do anything out of their norm. And that's why they're able to get the ball moved around so quickly and easily and get the shot. Alexis Dye in the game for Tennessee now. Last year's Sun Belt Player of the Year out of Troy University. And what an impact she's expected to make this year as well. Yeah, she's a, she's a special player. Uh, she's someone that physically can, can uh, defend the post. You can switch her up if she needs to defend away from the basket. Love her athleticism, but love her passion of, of being a lady ball and playing this game at such a high level now. How about and that defense? She is not scared of anything. But Di, unfortunately for the Tennessee fans, got called for a foul there. And that'll be her first. But uh, Di, just such a fun pl uh, player to watch. And she's coming in, Kelly Harper said, with seven championship rings. She won four high school state titles, a JUCO title, and two Sun Belt titles. And at the free throw line now is Brock Meyer. Uh, Brock Meyer had the honor of making the three-pointer and shoot around today. That was a big moment for her today. <laughs> and now makes the free throws. As you mentioned with Di, you know, she led the uh, NCAA in double-doubles with 23. She's on the Katrina McLean watch list. Again, a phenomenal player that can score the basketball in multiple ways. Southern Illinois is on an 8-0 run with under a minute to play in the first quarter. Burrell, long three. It'll stay with Tennessee. That is a, maybe a costly mistake there by Southern Illinois. Just didn't grab that ball. And as you know, Tennessee uh, had spent a lot of time on their end out of bounds uh, today and shoot around, looking to really execute in that aspect of the game. Um, I call that special teams. So here you're going to have a back screen potentially for a lob. Nope. Pick and pop coming. Die out of bounds off Southern Illinois. It'll stay with Tennessee. You're right, though, Nikki, in the shoot around. They spent a lot of time on those inbounds plays. They did, and and both teams did. And so, to me, this, this screen for the screener action here, bringing Burrell on the backside for the jumper, nice action. Oh, such a sweet shot. Textbook. And Tennessee within one. Final seconds here of the opening quarter. As you can see, Tennessee is starting to pick up their defense a little bit now. Out by half court, Sylvie. Check that clock. This is McAllister. 
Look at the ball movement. Ah, nice look inside. Good block by Puckett. Tennessee will have the last shot. Walker gets bumped by Sylvie with 2.6 seconds. So just good hustle play. Very good hustle play right there. I, I, I thought that um, Southern Illinois was going, to, was going to get a shot off there and get a layup, but a great block. Didn't time that up too good. <laughs> Another physical play by Southern Illinois. First foul on Sylvie, fifth on the team, and Jordan Walker at the free throw line now, getting her MBA here at Tennessee after graduating from Western Michigan with a bachelor's degree in political science. She has a job at PepsiCo waiting on her when she finishes her playing career or her education, whichever one she decides. They thought so much of her, PepsiCo's offered her a full-time position and holding it for her. I think that's great that she had that opportunity uh, to intern. And, and you can see these, these players are doing things to set themselves up for life yeah. after basketball. Love's desperation shot is not good, but uh, what an impressive opening quarter by Ray Burrell. As Burrell, the leading scorer in the game, barely missed a shot. We need to do something now. Pfeffer, what's the plan? Uh, T-Mobile, sir? T-Mobile has great phone offers for every customer on every plan. Okay, hold on a second. You tell me that new and existing customers can get this. Yup, new and existing customers. And they can get other benefits like free stuff or discounts every Tuesday. I was going to say the same thing. That's it. Just draw up a contract. T-Mobile doesn't have annual contracts, sir. I like that. Oh, I like that a lot. Great phone deals on every plan, every day, every one. Doritos Spicy Sweet Chili Wings. Get them while you can. Right. Spicy, sweet, chips, always. Cheese, all me on. Pepsi. Everyone wins. To the greatest of all times. Buffalo Wild Wings. Ray Burrell was four of five in that first quarter, Nikki. I mean, at times she almost made it look easy. She made it look effortless. Um, newsflash, she's the best player on Tennessee's team. <laughs> Let's make sure you find her and locate her and not leave her open. But Burrell, the game just comes easy to her she, because you know what? She's worked on it. You can see that she spent time in the gym. She was the first player in the gym today and one of the last ones to leave. A great quality to have when you're, when you're considered one of the best players. And for players out there that maybe don't have the, the pedigree coming out of high school, she was the only player that was not a McDonald's All-American coming into Tennessee. And this week, she was named on the National Player of the Year watch list for the Naismith Trophy, the Wade Trophy, the Wooden Award. So she's a great example of what you can do just by purely working hard. I mean, she is. And, and then she's not allowing uh, a, an award to define who she is. Ultimately, this uh, a player like her, she wants to win it all for her team. That's why you see the things that she does because she's wanting this team to be successful today. So how impressed are you with Southern Illinois? Southern Illinois has done a great job of just handling the Tennessee's pressure. They, they've now changed up their defense and went to their 2-3, uh, kind of a buzz-type defense. And Southern Illinois is keeping someone in the high post area, being aggressive to the paint. That was Walker being aggressive in the paint and scoring the first bucket of the second quarter. Southern, Southern Illinois up one. Both teams had 8-0 runs in that first quarter. In Tennessee uh, does not put Key out on the floor to start the second quarter. She got two early fouls at the beginning of the game. This is Wynn with the basketball, one of the freshmen. Shot clock down to three. And that three is no good by Walker. You know, I think the looks that Tennessee, they're getting, those are good looks. Um, it's one thing if you're not getting them. Um, that time, I thought that uh, the defense made them work, run the clock down. And so, again, a great defensive effort by Southern Illinois. Puckett, very aggressive defending out on the wing, Walker. Shot clock at five. Link, somebody's got to put it up. It's at one. McAllister throws it up. Got the rim, so the shot clock reset with a rebound by the Lady Vols. This is win. Again, I would look to go to Burrell, which they need to. 
<laughs> Again, that's another play to me, Nikki. I'm watching it happen, and it, it just looks almost too easy. It does. I How mean, does she do that? She's got just this nice bounce about her. I mean, she's long. She's fluid. Um, she gets to her spots on the floor, and she elevates. Um, with her height, she's going to shoot over you. Um, just, just really has one of the purest jump shots in the game. Tennessee back in front by a point. Second quarter, season opener. Link open for three. She hit one earlier. That's her second. Three points. When, the inside outside play right there allowed uh, Link to be able to make that shot. But I'm going to tell you, Walker is doing a great job of being a release for, uh, for Southern Illinois against the Lady Vols defense. Perel missed that one. Southern it, Illinois up by two now. It'd be a key st stat to look at because offensive rebounds by uh, Tennessee, they typically need those. They typically get those, and they haven't been getting them in this game. A, a, a foul in the process of that. That was Wynn who took it to the hole. And the foul was on Link. So Wynn will be on the free throw line. Kaya Wynn from Richmond, Texas. She was a quite the track star when she was younger, a two-time pentathlon state champion. She was a state champion in the 4x400 relay and 400 meters. And misses that. Well, let's take a look at Saturday's SEC college football lineup. Number two, Alabama hosting New Mexico State at noon Eastern, 11 Central on the SEC Network, while SEC Network Plus has Florida hosting Sanford, then South Carolina against Missouri, and at 7.30 Eastern, Arkansas takes on LSU in our SEC Saturday night matchup. All games are on the ESPN app, one app, one tap. And uh, Burrell getting a rest. Probably a much needed one. <laughs> She's been carrying this Tennessee team the whole game. Darby, number 21 in white, now out on the floor along with green. A lot of different combinations used tonight by Kelly Harper. And there's an illegal screen called on Walker. Gabby Walker, her first. And the second team foul. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily a clean uh, handoff. And so you can't then bump the player that's trying to get back into position. So good call there. But again, I love the physicality of this game right now. You also love pace, Nikki. And it's yes. been a very, uh, very transition filled game. I mean, they're going up and down the floor. Mm -hmm. They are. They're going up and down. Again, there's that offensive putback. Die. That's, yes. Sooner or later, you'd think just the Lady Vols' height would lead to more of those offensive rebounds, wouldn't you? Yeah, you, but I will say this. They've done a good job of trying to box out. Um, their best offensive rebounder is, is, on the, is not on the floor either. So that's two with, with Key and Horston out. Those are two very good offensive rebounders. We've had seven lead changes. Now we've got another one as Love buries the three from the corner. I, I think that that right corner over there in front of Tennessee's bench is the spot for Southern Illinois. Die will clean it up. Alexis Die. Alexis Die last year led the NCAA in double doubles and rebounds at Troy. She just does what's needed. She does the the work that um, takes a lot of effort, a little extra energy, and she's not afraid to to just exhaust herself in that regard. Uh, nice pass and the finish, just as good by McAllister. Well, when when you have a player that can shoot the three, she's got to do some other things. And here's this backdoor look, and potentially going to be able to go to the to the to the free throw line and score the three that way. Green picked up her second foul, so. Green will come out of the game. Ray Burrell returns from Tennessee. Carolina. Burrell coming back in as well for Tennessee. And McAllister on the free throw line, the senior from Columbia, Missouri. She is a 3.856 GPA electrical engineering major. How about that? I, the, the fact that <laughs> you can play basketball at this high level that she's been doing and be this great student. 
uh, and, and not taking a, a, a major that's easy to major in either. Oh, I'm just getting started, Nikki. We got all <laughs> kinds of GPAs out here tonight. I mean, this is an accomplished group in the classroom, but right now, Southern Illinois with its largest lead. Let's see if it is short. No. Oh, nice offensive rebound. I think they heard you, Nikki. Stripling puts that back. Well, they scored six points right there off of offensive putbacks, and to me, that's part of, of, of why uh, Tennessee is as good as they are. But teams that come in and play them know that you're going to have to keep them off the glass for 40 minutes. You can't just say 10, 15 minutes because they'll make you pay for it. Saluki still up one. We're in the second quarter of the season opener for both teams. Tennessee goes to... Central Florida on Friday night, the UCF in Orlando. Shot clock is down to two. Love throws it up, and it did not hit rim. Shot clock expired. It'll be Tennessee's ball. So Southern Illinois continuing to give the Lady Balls all they can handle here in the season opener. Give it up for you. In just a few out-of-pocket style, we'll talk some Lady Vols for life. We'll do a little hype or nah with some takes across the SEC and talk the first half. Any numbers stand out? Yeah, well, Tennessee over 7 from the three-point line, but they're doubling Southern Illinois in points in the paint. Attack the paint. Don't settle for threes. We'll talk more about it and get you caught up on everything SEC coming up in just a few, guys. Surrounded by Lady Balls. You got Andrea Carter in one ear, you're next to me. I mean, this is like, uh, you guys are taking over college basketball, Nikki. Hey, I mean, we learned from the best <laughs> with Pat Summit. Yes, you did. You know, she taught us, she taught us a lot about basketball. So it's great to be able to talk about it. It's great to be a, a, a part of a, of, a, of a person that really meant a lot to the game. Well, this is part of the tradition, Pat, established that Tennessee remains the all-time winningest program in terms of total wins in history, eight NCAA championships. Renaya Davis was the latest WNBA first-round draft pick, and they are the only women's program to make all 39 NCAA tournaments. And by the way, Tennessee maintains a 100% graduation rate. One of the things that you do once you graduate is you get to sign the pole. You get to put your name up there. Mine's probably like a gray, a really light gray, because it was so long ago when I signed it with a black Sharpie. Oh, they had pins then, huh? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm kidding. Ah, oh, foul, offensive foul on Link. Link got frustrated as she was being D'd up by Walker. And that is... The fourth turnover on Southern Illinois. And, and again, the pressure, you can't put your elbow and elbow someone, but the pressure that Walker was bringing was, was, was causing that frustration, and that was just a frustration by Link. That's all that was. Tennessee needs a bucket here. Long three put up and missed by Darby. Offensive rebound. And Die sticks it back in for Tennessee. Tennessee has not made a three, but they're cleaning up on the glass very efficiently. A one-point lead now. Part of Dye's, part, part, what, what, what makes Dye so special um, is, is the fact that she, she will do, she will do what's, what's, what doesn't necessarily show up. Um, typically, you're talking about Burrell and you're talking about Horston. Dye is going to add a leather layer to this Tennessee team with her hustle and her heart. Again, the Sun Belt Player of the Year last year for Troy University. Sylvie off the screen misses offense, or excuse me, rebound by Dai. And Dai led the NCAAs in rebounds last year. She averaged over 11 a game. There's another take, forced up, missed by Striplin. Again, when you look at the ability to rebound the basketball, right now Southern Illinois is doing a very good job of keeping, when they have kept Tennessee off the glass, um, they've, they've been able to get themselves in a position to score a lot better than trying to set up their press, uh, press offense against Tennessee. They're not able to get that set as much. Another shot clock scenario here with three, three-pointer launch that did not hit the rim. So Tennessee will take it over. Now, the buzzer went off, but play was not stopped by the officials. And there may be a discrepancy as to whether it hit the rim or not. Now they're saying that it didn't. It just hit the backboard. Yeah, the trajectory of the ball made it come right back. 
um, unless they thought it grazed it, but it looked like the ball just came right back and hit the bottom. Cindy Stein has done a magnificent job game planning against Tennessee tonight in her ninth season here, but she's been a head coach for 24 years at places like Emporia State, Missouri, Illinois Central College, Southern Illinois, and this is her final season as a head coach. Southern Illinois changing up their defense. Burrell misses the three. Tennessee still has not made a three. 0 for 9 behind the three-point line. You know, it's early in the year. <laughs> Just the first game, get these jitters out. We'll see what how they come back, both teams, in the second half. But like you said, low-scoring game, but Southern Illinois is doing a great job of, of controlling the, the pace and, and the tempo of the game. Sylvie, normally the leading scorer for this team. They've defended her well. Points have come from other places. Here's McAllister, five on the shot clock. Missed the layup, and Tennessee catches a break and will get the ball. Wow. Nice take right there. Just need to finish. Sometimes sometimes you, you're surprised, possibly, <laughs> yeah. that I'm this wide open. I think it's exactly what happened. She was waiting for the D to come over. It never came. Again, fixing up their defense, Southern Illinois. They're playing a little man now. Last possession, they were at zone. Good hit by Walker. That was a two. Just inside the three-point line. Timeout taken by Southern Illinois. And Tennessee up by three now. It gives us a chance to talk about Marty and McGee and SEC Nation. They bring you extensive SEC game previews that you won't find anywhere else this week. There'll be a Knoxville right here for the big game between number one Georgia and Tennessee. Coverage starts at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 Central. Both are right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. So it is clear that Kelly Harper is maintaining a lot of the traditions that Pat Summit started here. She has, she has the book, book club, and part of the book club is that they read things that Pat wrote. I mean, it's not like you had Pat Summit win a bunch of national championships and that legacy is gone. You, you cannot walk in this building without feeling Pat Summit. Well, you, you can't walk into this building. You look out on the right out here outside of the arena. There's the Pat Summit um, statue. Um, but the fact that you have a book club, that's an amazing opportunity for players to learn about Pat and, and what she stood for and so forth. Hey, I can't tell you how many times you've given me some uh, Pat quotes today just in conversation. Love for three. Wow, Southern Illinois has shot the three well here in this opening half. Again, that ball movement is key for them. They, they, they're they spreading the defense, making them have to, to extend, and then they're finding the rotation on the backside, not getting out quick enough, and the shooters are spotting up, ready to knock down shots. They made four threes. That was a good timeout. Burrell forces it up and in. And then a Burrell a little slow. I think she's going to pop up, though. She's a tough one. And uh, Burrell goes down again, grabbing her right leg. Again, good ball movement, bringing the ball around for the three. Southern Illinois knowing that they're going to have to make threes. Good take by Burrell here. She came down. They are uh, looking at her right leg. Tennessee again without Horston tonight, who has a, a lower limb extremity injury that isn't expected to be serious. And boy, I, you just have to yeah. hope that this is going to be okay. Yeah, I think the I think the fact that. Burrell couldn't bounce back up. You know that it's something serious for her because she's a tough one. Right Burrell now. with 12 points right now, six of nine shooting. And a lot of concern looks on the faces of these fans. This is what she's done tonight in this season opener. And uh, Burrell, as you said, she was the first one out for the shoot around. 
and I have to say because it impresses me when young people do this she didn't just start working on her game she came over gave you a big hug <laughs> and immediately engaged us both in conversation which to me I think is very impressive I, I do uh, you know these the fact that um, she's she's not on the floor her presence is always going to be felt because of how she gives to her teammates um, her ability to lead and inspire it should hopefully inspire uh, the Lady Vols with her absence right well, now. She chose to room with two freshmen this year <laughs> just to take them under her wing. Shot clock under 10. Another three from Love. Two in a row from Love behind the three-point line. And that has been how Southern Illinois has stayed in front or stayed with Tennessee making those threes. It has been. I mean, they've negated the, the height. They've done a decent job defensively. They've kept them off the boards, and now they're making shots. It's going to be it's going to be a game where Southern Illinois they're going to say, look, going into the half, we kind of our game plan worked. Let's stick with it. Hopefully they will. But Tennessee is going to probably have to make some adjustments because she cannot continue to leave love open. We are under 30 seconds from halftime, and there's a nice shot by Walker in the paint. Wow, Gabby Walker went right to her left, over her shoulder, right to the middle of the paint. Great job getting her touches. This matches the largest lead of the game for Southern Illinois as we are about to close out the second quarter and head into halftime. A lot to talk about in that Tennessee locker room. Walker got bumped, no foul. And at the buzzer, tied up, and I think we're just going to call the half. Southern Illinois leading Tennessee in the season opener by three. Let's send it into the studio with Alyssa and Andrea. And we welcome you back to Rocky Top, where things are not going all that well for Tennessee at halftime. The Lady Vols in their season opener trailing Southern Illinois by three. Hey, everybody. Sam Gore along with Nikki Fargus. And, Nikki, okay, the obvious question is, what does Tennessee need to do differently in this second half? Well, first off, I would get key going. You've got to establish the post game. You've got to get those easy baskets. The reason why Southern Illinois is able to get a lot of those rebounds because it's a lot of perimeter shots. But once Dye got in, involved, she was able to get some offensive rebounds. They gave them some easy baskets. That's what Tennessee's going to have to do in the, sec in the second half. Well, what Tennessee probably was not counting on was the three-point shooting by Kiara Love. Love has been loving the corner. She's done a great job for Southern Illinois setting the tone, not only as the point guard bringing the ball down, but being a score for them. Ball movement by Southern Illinois has been tremendous. They've been able to handle Tennessee's pressure, and then Love is sitting there spotting up, hitting three. She's three for three for the three-point line with nine points. Most of the offense came from Ray Burrell for Tennessee, 12 points in the first half. Well, Ray is a special player. Uh, we wish that she's returning. We hope that she does, but she's someone that you have got to know where she's at at all times on the floor, whether it's the end out of bounds play, whether it's transition, whether her whether it's her coming off a of ball screen. That jump shot is really nice, and Ray Burrell is, is one of the best players in the in the league and in the country. Here are the overall stats from the first half. Again, Tennessee did not make a three-pointer, and uh, Love made three of the Salukis. So Burrell is out. If you're joining us late, she was helped off the court late in the second quarter. We have not been given any updated information on her injury, but she's not on the floor now. Three-pointer put up right away by Darby. Missed, and there's a rebound taken by Brockmeyer. Well, that play was a back screen, kind of bringing key to the basket, and then with a pin down for Darby. Once Tennessee sets in to making some shots, I think they need to see that first one go down. But again, Southern Illinois doing a great job defensively. And Key checked out early in the first quarter with two quick fouls, so she still has not scored in this game. And she is the kind of player that should have a major impact with the height differential between these two teams. Well, here she is running the floor. You got to reward her off the dribble. Extra pass. Great job. Miss. Oh, so close. Darby couldn't finish, but a key was out in front leading the break there, waiting on that pass. When you have your center running the floor like she did, you got to reward her. Uh, that ball was a little farther out from her reach, so she wasn't able to go right into a score. Key, 6'6", six, six, ties for the tallest player ever in Lady Ball history with two others. There's the, the miss by Sylvie. 
You know, that's the thing about Dai's game. You know, she's playing in the post. She's your rebounder, but she also can start your break. Dai will put up that jumper short, and then Sylvie grabs the rebound. You know, Dai played very aggressively in that exhibition last week against Georgia College. See if she can find that here tonight. It's the season opener for both teams. Sylvie off the screen, blocked by Key. That's what happens when you have Key in the paint. She doesn't allow for those easy layups that uh, Southern Illinois had gotten the first half. Her ability to take the ball out the air clean, uh, that's what makes her one of the best shot blockers in the game. Fans still on their feet here in Thompson Bowling Arena waiting for the Lady Vols to score. That's one oh. of the traditions here. Yeah, there's some more contact inside. And uh, Key is going to get called for this foul. Now, when she was in the game earlier, she and Brockmeyer kept getting tangled up, and that's the third time Key's been called for the foul. Well, it was physical prior to her, the foul being called on her, and then the extension of the uh, arm by Key. The official, official saw that and went and looked at it. And I think they're going to review it. I think they're going to look at it and review it. And Kelly Harper furious over that call, and uh, they are going to review it. Now, Horston is out tonight for Tennessee as well, and she jumped up off the bench. <laughs> and so uh, Coach Harper talking to Key about that play. Let's uh, go back and take a couple of looks at it. Well, here's the physical part of it, and then he just kind of moved her and tried to move her out the way there. But any blow to the face or to the head, the officials are going to go and look at it. This is from a different angle. Key, uh, that's 25, Brockmeyer for the Salukis. Key got called for the foul. That's her third. She did not play most of the first two quarters. You know, one of the things that they can do, too, on this one, they can look at it, and if they're staying over there, uh, they might be seeing something. This could get elevated um, uh, um, as far as Key with her third foul, or this, could, this foul could get elevated to something more. Key is 6'6". She's by far the tallest player out on the floor. She's up against Abby Brockmeyer, who's 6'1". And Tamari Key does not look very happy over there. They are reviewing this play. So you can see right here with her moving her arm out of the way or trying to move her, she went right in and, fit and hit her in the face. So again, that's the call that they're going to make every time when there's any contact to, to someone's face. So we've got a timeout on the floor now as well as we sort this out. We'll return to Knoxville with the Lady Vols still trailing by three in the third. Well, we were given word during that timeout that it was just a common foul call on Tamari Key. So don't worry if you're a Tennessee fan, the fact that Key has her warm-up on. She's just been taken out of the game for a moment, but it was just the third foul on Key. That is the extent of uh, what's happened. And in an even bigger surprise, the official came over and Nikki told the officials they were doing a great job. Does that feel good to you to, in this role, be able to praise officials now instead of working them? I know, for about 25 years, I've been on that other sideline. And I just want to let them know that they're doing a, a very good job. Very affirming of you, Nikki. Good, <laughs> good job. Now, if I was on the other side, I wouldn't probably you'd, be saying You'd look that. like Kelly Harper. I would look like right. Kelly right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So just the third foul on Key, but again, her presence is now off the floor. And she didn't play most of the first half, so Tennessee without Horston, without Burrell, and without Key. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge loss for them not having Key because the play before that when Southern Illinois had a good look, she was the one who came and took the ball out of the air with the block. There's Walker making the most of no big post presence. And Southern Illinois extends its lead to five now. 32-27, largest lead the Salukis have had. Against this zone right now, there's a lot of movement, a lot of spacing here, um, but then there's got to be somebody cutting through the paint. Someone's got to get in the paint for them. This Again. was the take by Walker a second ago. 
Well, good good pass right there. Um, when you have when you have a team with Brock Meyer who can distribute um, as a as a guard um, a to to the to the guard cutting back door or to the post player Gabby Walker cutting back door. That's what you want. You want to have those assists, and that's why the layup is there because they're moving without the ball. Green. Nice move down low by Kian Green. Again, establishing some presence in the paint gives you a higher percentage for an offensive rebound. Tennessee cuts the lead to three. 22 with the ball. Now she's in for the first time. That's Allie Potter, junior from El Dorado, Kansas. Shot clock under 10. Potter puts up the long three. Wow. Off the bench, strange the three. The three ball was going to be the great equalizer in this game. So patience, good patience here by, by Southern Illinois. Moving the basketball, not taking a shot early, finding the spot up shooter in the corner. Continuing in the second half, what they did in the first half in the three point line. So Walker on the free throw line now after getting fouled. Walker was fouled by Walker. <laughs> so I couldn't go wrong there, right? <laughs> Walker on the free throw line, knocks down that first one. It gives us a chance to remind you that tonight, out of pocket with Alyssa Lang and Andrea Carter, take you inside the world of SEC sports, laid back interviews, lots of laughs, and the Lang's signature passion for finding the best food the SEC has to offer. It's a one hour special this week, 11 Eastern, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, one app, one tap. Tennessee will keep the ball. Walker. Misses that jumper. Again, I like the full court pressure where Tennessee's trying to really pick up their defense now. But as you can see, Southern Illinois still patient, taking their time, moving the basketball, making sure they get the shot that they want. Potter tried to spot up for another three, and three seconds in the lane. Kada was in the lane. Now, Potter's very inspiring, Nikki. She uh, plays at this level with type 1 diabetes. November is National Diabetes Month. And uh, Potter actually plays with a monitor under her right arm the entire game. Keeps it taped up while she's out on the floor. Well, I'd mentioned to her when she came over because, you know, these... You know, you see them in uniforms, but you got to see them outside of the uniform. And I said, hey, do you think, oh, think about modeling? <laughs> yeah, you did. Die with a good-looking jumper for Tennessee. And the Lady Vols within three again. Salukis have led by as many as five in this season opener. Love going to work. Could not get past Miles. Sylvie. And another chance for Tennessee. Got to look inside. Dye's feeling it. She's feeling it right now. Good Dye. take. Going to work. Well, you looked at me at halftime and you said, Alexis Dye. And I think everyone can agree that Dye is going to have to be the difference maker with so many of Tennessee's stars on the bench. And she's responding, the leg difference maker in the second half. She's been huge. She's been all over the board. She's given them second and third opportunities. The little turnaround jumper at the free throw line. I just like the energy that she plays with. She's a she's a high pace player. She can rebound the basketball, take it off the glass, and start the break. Just does a lot of great things for this team. Daya was the Sun Belt Player of the Year last year at Troy University. This these were her numbers. Average 17 points, 13 rebounds a game, and hit half her shots. I mean, someone like Dye coming into the SEC, you saw the numbers that she put up um, against uh, against the SEC. A and M. A and M. She she is not she is not afraid to go at anyone. And today she's shown why. You know, Tennessee said, "Hey, we're going to bring you here because she's a player that is an impactful player, immediately doing things and filling the columns 
for Tennessee. You mentioned the NCAA tournament last year. Her Troy team played uh, Gary Blair's Aggies, and she put up 26 points and 11 rebounds. We've all, of course, uh, we're all aware that this is going to be Gary Blair's last season as well. And I said maybe Di almost sent him into retirement early. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know Gary would laugh at that. So I, I feel good about saying that. But he is back. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad. You know, there's so many great coaches in this league, and Gary has been one of those coaches that's been a, a guardian of the game yeah. for women's basketball for a long time. It, it is what defines this league, I think, are the coaches. Well, McAllister got loose, but there was a foul as she went around the defender. Rennie is in the game for Tennessee, 10 and white. You know, Gabby Walker does the little things for this team, too. You know, setting a great screen, being the, recip being the passer to look for her teammates when she catches the ball inside, um, being a hustle player, um, taking charges. You know, Gabby Walker is, is, is someone that, you know, when you're looking at an undersized post player, she plays bigger than what she is. The, the foul is on Rennie. Jesse Rennie is a junior from Australia. She is from Bendigo, Australia, which is in the state of Victoria. For all you tennis fans, that's where uh, the Australian Open is in Melbourne. Second Aussie to play here, and there's a foul away from the ball inside. Potter got called, and it will be Tennessee's ball. But the action to, to run McAllister, to get her going off of that screen there, uh, I, like the, I like the action that um, Southern Illinois is running. Tennessee can tie or take the lead on this possession. Southern Illinois is led by as many as five. Die, she'll take it, and she'll hit it. She's in that, she's in that groove though. You know, she's she's coming across, she's they're splitting her in this in this uh, double low ball screen action with a shooter coming off the side, and then they're giving her an ISO in the in the high post area. If you press up on her, she's gonna go by you. If you stay off of her, she's gonna shoot the jumper in your face. Uh, speaking of face, you can see it in her face. <laughs> she, she's way more determined now. A lot more aggressive out there. Mm-hmm. We've had a lot yes. of lead changes in this game, and Walker banks that in to give us our 12th lead change of this season opener. But again, it is a night for Tennessee where uh, Ray Burrell went out late in the second quarter. Horston is not playing tonight. Key is on the bench with three fouls, and the Salukis are making the most of it. Rennie, quick three. And look who's rebounding the basketball. Dive. Did she push off to get that rebound, or was she fouled? Uh, I think she was fouled from behind. And the foul is on Brockmeyer. A couple of subs will come in. Link and Sylvie return for the Salukis. Second foul on Brockmeyer. She heads to the bench. It's that inbounds play they worked on today. Again, the, the, the movement of the basketball to try to get angles. Here's that high post area. First one that she missed, I think, today. But I like the look of them getting Di involved early and continuing to go to her to, for her ability to score for this team. She's right now their leading scorer, and she's someone that you're going to have to ride the rest of the game. Now, Link. There is a foul on Tennessee. A win gets called for the foul. Walker had jumped up and was being very vocal after this play. Walker is there setting the screen, and the foul is called on Wynn, who went through the screen. Well, there might have been just a little bit of a, uh, of a movement there <laughs> by Walker, just a tad. She uh, did not get called for the link with the ball. So the lead is safe for now. Shot clock down to five. Link forces it up. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Wynn was in her face. She was right there, but Link was just set and ready to shoot it. I don't think she would have cared had the shot got blocked. But when the time is ticking and they're having the patience that they're showing, it's they're going to take their time and knock down those shots. Rennie misses the three. And Emily Saunders in for the first time tonight for Tennessee, 31 in white. 
Saunders, now the tallest player on the fort, 6'5". Saluki's up by four here in the third quarter. They've shot 50% behind the three-point line. And, and the action, just look at the, the patience that they're playing with right now. It's still That was still a good shot there. Good rebound by Dai. Dai is uh, getting close to a double-double. Travel. Lady Vol turnover. Walker will come back in the game. That's the sixth turnover on Tennessee. You know, when you look at a Tennessee team, one of the things that they're known for is their ability to get all over the offensive glass and score on offensive sure. rebounds, their ability to get in transition and run the basketball. Southern Illinois, Coach Stein and her staff have done an amazing job of canceling out those two areas, which is now forcing Tennessee to play in a half-court setting. Cindy Stein, head coach, will retire at the end of the season. Sylvie gets a screen. Now well, that pass intercepted easily by Miles. This is where Tennessee's got to convert. They've got to be able to score in transition and get that easy basket. And that pass forced in to die, and the Salukis take over now. Just over a minute to play in this third quarter, and Southern Illinois still in front. They were up by three at the half. Again, another transition opportunity. Miles off the glass. That was that was high off the glass. Sure was. Way up there. Miles only 5-4. Banks it in. Final seconds of the third quarter. The Salukis up by two. Long jumper off the mark. Die. Whoa. That not a mistake, not something that you would like to have happen with the last possession of the third quarter. When you have possessions like that, um, unforced turnovers, if you will, to me that might have been a sign of fatigue. Maybe a little tired, maybe a little winded, uh, because dai has been doing a lot for, for the Lady Balls today. Dai is coming out of the game. Green replaces her. I, I think you're exactly right, Nikki. She, she did look winded after the play, and Kelly Harper saw it right away. So the Salukis could play for the last shot here in the third quarter. They lead by two. The play action that they're running here, though, I think the back screen, and then they're going to go into a stagger screen and bring in the shooter off. They're looking for her. Almost another turnover. Clock down to one. Love got it. Here Kiara Love in the first half was making threes. Well, that's a pretty big two for the 5-4 sophomore from Glenn Carver, Illinois. Love. Love. I love that play right there. Again, Southern Illinois doing a great job. 42 to 38 over Tennessee. <laughs> From, uh, the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. If you've never been to the Hall of Fame, you have got to check it out. The Salukis were over there earlier today. And hello, oh, look who that is. Show Marcinac. Candace Parker, by the way, will be the Grand Marshal of the Homecoming Parade. But this is what they did during their book club this year, the Lady Balls. They went through Pat's definite dozen. So which of her definite dozen do they need to apply right now? I'm going to have to say all of them <laughs> right now. But, no, I think, it's, it's, I think this game is about being a competitor. As you can see, Di has taken her game to another level. She's competing on every play. Other players on the Tennessee team are going to have to do that. On the flip side of it, Southern Illinois knows exactly what to do as well, and they're competing on every possession. So learn to be a great competitor. That's number four on the definite dozen. That, that's your principle that Tennessee needs to apply most, along with the other 11. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tamari Key back in the game. She's got three fouls. And we are starting the fourth quarter now. The Salukis led by three at the half. They've extended it to four. 
I like that Tennessee is trying to change it up a little bit with the pace of the game being in the favor of Southern Illinois. When you go to that trapping, it makes them move the ball and potentially could get a shot clock violation and love for the three. Oh, she missed it. And I love it's been making threes like they were layups today. That's the first one she's missed. And a foul as that ball came off the rim. You know, when we were talking about the death and the dozen, I, I think both teams are, are working extremely hard. You can see that. You can see them giving everything they got right now. Um, the smart, work hard, work smart. And that's part of the game plan. Who's going to execute the coach's game plan that they put in place? Obviously, Kelly Harper wasn't game planning for her not to have some of her key players. But the rest of the team has the ability to step up and get valuable minutes. That foul was on McAllister, Tennessee, without Burrell, without Horston. Key has not played very much because she's been in foul trouble, but is out there now trying to get position in the post. Shot clock under 10, and uh, Key pushed from behind. That foul is on Walker, and that is her third foul. Gabby Walker getting her master's in biochemistry at Southern Illinois and is also going to get her PhD. She has been doing research on childhood muscular cancer. Uh, almost an interception. Walker recovers. Good hustle right there by Walker. Again, you can see that Tennessee is trying to penetrate kick. Offensive rebound. That is Green who cleans it up. And the Lady Vols within two. Again, changing up their defense. Miles is picking up full court, putting a little bit more pressure on Love. Southern Illinois has not beaten an SEC team since 1987. And Tennessee wants to keep it that way. Sylvie blocked. Nice play by Walker. You got Key running. Got to get your head up. Walker will take it. And she is fouled in the process. Foul number zero, zero one. Foul is going to be on Love. That is her second. And it'll put the Lady Balls on the free throw line. So Walker going to go to the line right now. Walker two for two from the free throw line. Tomorrow, SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the SEC Women's Soccer Tournament Semis and Championship game. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sound from players and coaches. 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on SEC Network. And the app, one app, one tap. By the way, congratulations to the Tennessee Lady Vols soccer team. They won the SEC Championship last weekend. We're tied at 42. Here we go, Nikki. Well, you're hearing the crowd get involved. They're, getting, they're yelling out defense right now. And the patience, again, of Southern Illinois, just moving the basketball around, taking their time, looking to get the shot that they want. Sylvia, deep three. Three points. Ice water. That three was at the E, the <laughs> end of Tennessee. It was. Wow. And that quiets this crowd very quickly. The three ball by Southern Illinois has been the difference. They've been very deliberate on patience, moving the basketball, doing all the things that they need to to be successful. It'll stay on this end. Eight threes now by SIU. The thing that you like about SIU too is that they're, they're not, they're not, um, the ball's not getting stuck in one player's hand. They're doing a great job of just dis distributing the basketball, moving the defense around the, around the uh, perimeter, and then getting the look that they want. Yeah, foul. McAllister going after that aggressively and commits the foul. That is her second foul. Team foul number four. Dye is back in the Tennessee lineup now, and Green will head to the bench. Lady Vols will be running that inbounds play from the baseline. Miles ready to throw it in. And Miles lobs it out to Walker. Walker down the lane. Sylvie all alone and oh. missed the layup. Again, I think that surprised her that she was that wide open. Now, Tennessee, are you able to convert on the other end? A foul is called. 
Yeah, foul inside of Brockmeyer, and Key have been going at it all game. Brockmeyer picks up her third foul, so they both have three. Brockmeyer, number 25, puts Key on the line. You're seeing Key being very physical, trying to get position there. But you can't, low post defense, to me, you're going to have to beat her to the spot. So defensively, you want to clean up the post defense, then get there first. Uh, Brock Meyer's got to do a better job of owning the block and making Key have to displace her as opposed to the other way around. But Key, again, trying to establish herself as a go-to for this team in the paint. And Key still scoreless in this game. The Saluki still leading the Lady Vols by three here in the fourth quarter. Love shouting out directions. Again, the pace is in their favor. The pace is in their favor. And another player goes down. Walker is going to get called for this one. Foul on number 20, Gabby Walker. And that is the fourth foul on Walker. And guess so. who stood in there and took the charge? <laughs> Walker. <laughs> the other Walker. Walker and Walker. Yes. Walker is number 20 for Southern Illinois, number four for the Lady Vols. Walker on the bench now. Key still posting up physically with Brockmeyer. Now pops out for the screen. Walker. It's a two. Okay, I had the rebound, lost it, and it will go to Southern Illinois. It's a good, it was a good screening action to get uh, the look right there at the free throw line jumper. But again, Southern Illinois battling down underneath in the paint. When you have your best rebounder, Gabby Walker, out, other players are going to have to step up and rebound. Yeah, I just wish the intensity would pick up in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th this is an intense game. I it love is. it. It is. It is. Both teams going at it. Season opener and another foul down low. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a lot of whistles here as a result of the intensity in the second half. <laughs> well, Brockmeyer was trying to establish herself with um, on the low block, and so same calls are being made on both ends. If there's any displacement done, the refs are, are, are recognizing it and calling it. That was uh, Tennessee's Walker committing that foul. Saluki still with a three-point lead. Love defended by Miles. They're both 5-4. Shortest players on the floor. Brock Meyer. And that falls right in the hands of Walker. The fact that Tennessee right now, the score is as low as it is, this is playing in Southern Illinois' favor. The score being a low-scoring game, that's exactly what they wanted to have happen. Kata is probably going to come out of the game now. She's got three fouls. She was uh, looking to see if she was coming out. Actually, I think she may stay in. Link comes out instead. But Alexis Dye will go to the free throw line now to try to bring Tennessee within a point. Dye getting her master's degree here at Tennessee. Off the front of the rim. Free throw shooting today for Tennessee. The Lady Ball 6 of 11. And Key still has not scored a point. Well, you have Dye who's really picked up every aspect of the game from being a scorer to a rebounder. She's already has a double double with 14 points and 10, 10 boards. Miles, good D on love. There's the 10 count. That so right there is an energy play. That, that's an energy play. Hopefully that can get Tennessee going. But to pick up a point guard full court, that takes a lot of grit. That was fun to watch, seeing Miles defend like that. We may see a few of those clips in summer camp this year. That was good. <laughs> it's good stuff. You know, there was this, there was this uh, drill that Pat Summit would have you do, and it would, you would have to turn your, your de the defender three times in the backcourt before they got across. There's Love with a good defensive play. She's pursued, makes the layup. 
And that extends the Southern Illinois lead to five, largest of the game again. If you look at right now, and I know there's five minutes left to go in this game, but if, you, if we had to talk about who's playing at a high level right now, Love is doing exactly that. She turned the ball over, got it back, and was able to score. That is the first three-pointer of the game for Tennessee, and it is shot by Jordan Walker. Again, Walker is stepping up right now, getting herself to the free throw line. Then she's able to knock down the three, giving the Lady Vols an opportunity back in this game. Sylvie trying to answer, can't do it. Tennessee, can Tyre take the lead on this possession? Green. Die faces, shoots. And more good hustle on that rebound. That foul is going to be called on bucket. So Tennessee within two, 431 to play. Still Southern Illinois out of the three balls going, shooting uh, eight for 18 from the three point line. And then the play of Gabby Walker has just been tremendous. She's been an assist, a scorer, a rebounder, a, a charge taker. She's set her screens. They're just playing well together as a team right now. Southern Illinois has made eight three pointers in this game. And they've also been perfect from the free throw line, five of five. But can they hang on and beat an SEC team for the first time since 1987? Sometimes you can get close, but you can't finish. Let's see what happens to the Salukis. Of course, they are partially led by a former Lady Vol. As we've touched on, Jody Adams-Birch is the associate head coach. There she is. It's quite the player here for Pat Summit, including winning a national championship. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that uh, they talked about at the very beginning, and uh, they talked about you have to come into this game, and you, it starts with how you think, walk, talk, and behave. And tonight, Southern Illinois has answered what the coaches have requested of them with playing this game at a high level, being physical, sharing the basketball, and, and not backing down. They are also a, a very senior-led team as well. A lot of experience on this Southern Illinois roster, and perhaps that's one of the big factors for them as well. McAllister misses the runner. Again, Tennessee can tie or take the lead. Three on the way. Got it. Puckett was spotting up the entire time. You can see her running down the sideline looking for the basketball. And point guard was able to find her. Walker was able to find her, look ahead. And, and to me, Southern Illinois had been doing a good job of getting back in transition. But in this instance, the numbers were in their favor, uh, Tennessee's favor. And that's where you got the open three-point shot by Puckett. Puckett, one of the three Alabama players on the roster this year, one of the talented freshmen, the Alabama State Player of the Year last year in high school, has given Tennessee the lead. McAllister. You can just see defensively Tennessee is trying to pick up their defense right now. Shot clock is at one. He had the rebound and then she's fouled. And uh, both play players smiling, but that foul is going to be on Brockmeyer, and that should be her fourth. And it will put Key on the free throw line with 317 left to play. You can see the momentum starting to change a little bit here. Southern Illinois is going to have to settle down get back to the things that got them into this position, but you're seeing them going really, really late and just throwing up shots and hoping that they go in. First point of the game for Key, and I was going to say Tennessee needs to start making free throws. They had missed their last four, so. Well, they heard you. I guess I still said it. In your mind. <laughs> Ah, uh, the offensive stick back, no good. Key, though, comes flying in, gets the rebound, and a jump ball. Tennessee will keep it as a result of the alternating possession arrow. Again, another opportunity for Tennessee to get that second and third possession. 
you have to keep them off the offensive glass as best as you can. A player like Di needs a body on her all the time. Now Walker with the foul, and that will be all for Gabby Walker. And Walker will foul out of the game with 10 points. Tremendous effort from Gabby Walker. As we mentioned, her academic accomplishments, uh, getting her master's in biochemistry and will start working on her PhD soon. Tonight, though, fouling out after scoring 10 points. And now she'll fire up her team. Key back on the free throw line. Again, when you have a player like Gabby Walker on the floor, she not only was helping offensively with 10 points, but what she was doing defensively to negate some of those post touches or keep them from getting easy positions. She's done a great job. Now Walker uh, talking to Jody adams Burch. Tennessee now has scored nine straight points to take the lead by four. Brockmeyer going to drive, forces it up. Good. In traffic. Yeah, I don't think she could see the rim there. She still made it. Nice. Right, right now with 2.40 left to go in the game, again, establishing those easy baskets. Tennessee does not have to jump shoot the basketball. They can look to go inside. They can put a trade. They're getting the calls inside as far as with the post feed. Key took an extra step. That'll turn it over with 2.32 left. Coach Harper and the Lady Vols have had their hands full tonight with the Salukis. Yes, they have. And the offensive execution of Southern Illinois, to me, their patience, but then there's times where you need to take the best shot. Love has made a lot of threes, bypass that one. McAllister throws it up, misses. And the, the ball actually went out of bounds. So it will be Southern Illinois' ball, 20 seconds on the shot clock, 2.08 on the game clock here in the fourth quarter. Sylvie off the inbounds pass, misses the three. Tennessee in transition. Walker. I would say this right now, someone needs to control the tempo of the game the last two minutes. Set up, get the play action you want, go to the player who you want to go to, and then go to the next option, the next option. But be sure to establish that paint points. Nice drive by Puckett. Puckett with five big points here in the fourth quarter. And you can see that off that penetration, that Key did a great job of just clearing out the lane and allowing Puckett to have a free look at the basket. Lady Ball's up four. So we approach the final minute of regulation. Shot clock at five. Sylvie looking for help. Forced it up, goes out of bounds, no whistle, and the ball will belong to Tennessee. Well, here you're going to see a ball screen being set right here. The big duck in by Key, just clearing the lane, and Puckett finishing at the basket. So 107 left to play. Tennessee has battled back. They've overcome a five-point deficit to lead by four, but I, this game is anything but over. Not when you have the ability to shoot the three. And Southern Illinois has shown that they can knock those down. They have made eight three-pointers tonight. Under a minute to play. Walker gets around McAllister. Key with the offensive rebound and stick back. And Tennessee taking a timeout. <laughs> Tamari Key with a nice loving slap from Horston. And Tamari Key putting this team on her back and has pushed the Lady Vols up by six. Well, when you want to get back into a game, 
You better pick up your defensive pressure. Right there, that was an energy play for Tennessee with the 10-second violation in the backcourt. The first three ball that went down for Tennessee. Now you got a, you got Puckett who's hitting a three, but Puckett has been critical down the down the stretch here. She scored five points in the last few minutes of the ball game, and again Tennessee is now in control. Pace by uh, Southern Illinois has got to pick up because the clock is not on their side at this point. Largest lead Tennessee's had so far tonight, Nikki. Uh, the bigger question I have: Do you think early on we're going to see a lot of teams like Southern Illinois from mid-major conferences that have a lot of seniors? push young power five schools because of that extra COVID year and the fact that they just have a lot more leadership and experience. I, I would I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, the, the senior, the leadership here, this team has had an opportunity to build their chemistry. They gave them an extra year and as a freshman coming in there's not the pressure when you have six seniors. There's not that pressure there as a freshman. Now do you want to play? Yes, but you're also being patient for when your time is and your number is going to be called. Well, we'll see, but if this game is any indication, we are in for a very exciting November and December. <laughs> Tennessee has scored 13 of the last 15 points and has taken the lead in the nick of time, it would seem. A six-point lead here with 47.7 seconds left in regulation. Southern Illinois has the ball. The lob to Brockmeyer. Broken up. And uh, Brockmeyer is going to get called for the foul over the back. And it will be her fifth if I'm right. Brockmeyer has played a, a very good defensive game. Well, they went to. Let's see. They went yeah, to they're try reviewing to score. it. They went to try to score it really quickly, and they threw the back the back screen law play. I, I love that they're reviewing this because this if, critical. yeah, if that fouls on Brockmeyer, she's out of the game. What do you think, Coach? I think they may be reviewing who the ball was off of. I think that's what probably they're looking at and saying that it's off of Southern Illinois, and as you can see, maybe Brockmeyer's hand right hand hit the ball last so no foul just out of bounds yes no foul just out of bounds but again that's that's key if, if, if it is southern noise basketball give them another opportunity to cut into this deficit with 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 46 seconds left to go in the game yeah when you made eight three pointers that six point deficit just is not as big eight of 20 for the salukis tennessee made those two threes here in the second half. What what a job by Cindy Stein and Jody adams Birch to, to game plan for the Lady Vols and see her team execute like this. I mean, she's got to be um, excited about what this could do for her team moving forward. They have played with a taller, more athletic, uh, team and they've done the little things that she asked of them box out take care of the basketball make the extra pass they've done all of those things again that's what happens when you have some leadership so we're going through a pretty lengthy review over the score table this is the play that's in question initially it looked like Brockmeyer was called for the foul and the three officials met and then headed over to the scores table uh, we, we think maybe instead of a foul it's just who the ball's out of bounds on Okay, so I'm going to guess here. Just All right. Looking at the replay again. You're, but, uh, but you're so perfect tonight, Nikki. I don't want to mess you. <laughs> I don't want you to mess this up. I'm going to say it's Southern Illinois ball. All right. I'm going with. I think that ball is out of, out of off of uh, Tennessee. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what a debut! You're on fire, Nikki. You got it. So that that's right. There. They're not calling a foul on Brockmeyer, and even better for Southern Illinois, they get to keep the ball as it was ruled out on Tennessee. So 46.4 seconds left, Tennessee up six, Salukis with the ball, and they've been making threes all night. Again, when you're looking at 46 seconds, this has got to be a quick score by Southern Illinois. Get the best score you can, get the best shot you can, but you want to try to expand this game 
quickly get to the free throw line as an opportunity, but with a shot blocker like Key in there, <laughs> you're not getting to the free throw line that often. But so be ready to, to, to possibly set some screens and maybe you can get yourself to the free throw line by setting, uh, setting blind screens. Um, but the shot clock right now, full shot clock for Southern Illinois, but just making sure that they get a three off is, I wouldn't game plan just for that unless it's wide open. And that was the delay. They were making sure the clock was set properly. McAllister ready to inbound. Into Love. Uh, McAllister forced the pass, intercepted by the Lady Balls. We got a foul here. We got a foul early. McAllister fouling Walker. And Walker upset with her, or excuse me, McAllister upset with herself over that pass. That was her third foul. Got to shake it off here. McAllister, one of those senior leaders, but has put Walker back on the free throw line. Walker, five of six. She's been the best free throw shooter for Tennessee tonight. And continues. Walker now with 11 points. Make it 12. Tennessee back in front by eight now. 57-49. Timeout Southern Illinois. The one thing that you can say about Walker in the first half, wasn't a factor. In the second half, changed the complexion of the game. Offensively, she, stood, she stepped up. Defensively, she's done some things to rattle and disrupt Southern Illinois. She's someone that, if you're moving forward um, and you want a player to, to come in and be ready to play, she's that player for you with her ability to score, defend, rebound. She does a little bit of everything for you. Well, Southern Illinois out of the Missouri Valley Conference. They are pushing the SEC's Lady Balls tonight. These are some of the highlights from the Salukis so far here in the second half. They led by three coming out into the third quarter and just kept going. Well, the, the fact that they won in this game, you knew that they were going to come in here and play hard. You knew that. But they have really did a great job of executing the game plan. And when players come in to Thompson Bowling Arena, They've got to they've got to know like look we can't come in here and just think that they're just gonna like come out here and just give it to us we got to go take this and Southern Illinois was on the verge and still possibly you never know but they came in here ready to take this game. Well, we may see some big things from Southern Illinois this year. A very senior heavy team. Key running back out onto the floor with Die. It will be Saluki basketball. 36.6 seconds left. McAllister having trouble getting it in. Finally gets it to Love. Again, got to go quick here with your with your shots um, and, and look to get a quick shot because the time is, is just keep ru running down. That entry pass intercepted by Key. Salukis will be looking to foul and McAllister gets called for the foul. You know, the one thing that we've noticed these last two possessions that Southern Illinois has, they turned the ball over both times. Late game, you have to get a you have to get a shot up. You can't just give the ball back to the opposing team. At least get a shot up, at least get possibly get an offensive rebound. But turning the ball over is the last thing that you should do at this at this point. McAllister was relieved to find out that she hadn't fouled out. She headed to the bench, but it was only her fourth, so she stays on the floor. Salukis have turned it over in their last three possessions. And uh, this time Walker does not make the free throw. She just made a couple. 20 seconds left in regulation. Missed them both. Sylvie blocking out, but all it did was let Walker get the ball back and stick it in. Again, the hustle plays, all of those little things, hustling after the basketball to then convert to a layup. Those are the little things that 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 Walker has done for for Tennessee in this second half and it's been, and it's made the difference. An outstanding second effort by Walker following her missed shot. And so Tennessee now up by 10 with 16.8 seconds left. And if you take a look, you come in and you've just tuned into this game and you see the score <laughs> it is not a reflection of what we've been through tonight as Southern Illinois led for a good portion of this game yes this has been a great 
great matchup, great game for Southern Illinois. So Tennessee survives quite an effort from Southern Illinois and the Lady Vols win their season opener. Kelly Harper has never lost a season opener here at Tennessee. That record stays intact. And the Lady Vols defeat Southern Illinois by 10 at home.